Winter has arrived in Idaho. But it's not for the faint of heart. Freezing temps, dangerously slick roads, and lots of snow. My friends wanted to come see an Idaho winter, and let's just say, we found it, and then some. Welcome to this winter adventure, and I know I know it doesn't look like winter yet, but there's a storm forecasted, which seems so odd because we have blue sky and it's warm right now. But we're headed up past this dam called Arrow Rock Dam, and we're you so... <laughs> What's up? What's going so on? So I'm also here with uh, a few friends. Uh, we got friends. David from... That's a little generous. <laughs> David from Off the Grind. Acquaintances. Rob from, Rob, uh, from Revere Overland. I know you uh, don't know these guys. They're total strangers to you, but I'll vouch for them. They're they're um, okay people. Hey, David, can I borrow your Morflate system? Yeah. I forgot to bring deflators. Folks, this is why it pays to have YouTuber friends, because they always have good gear. And when you're a bonehead and you forget your stuff, they can help you out. Always here for you, buddy. <laughs> As you can see, David is a good guy, which almost made me feel bad for the prank Rob and I played on him the night before. Okay, so we're gonna play this prank on David. So his uh, steering box has been giving him trouble lately. He says like not feeling right, and so um, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to play into his fears that there's something wrong with his Bronco. And I'm gonna zip tie this harmonica to like some place on his Bronco. So when he's driving down the road, and make a bunch of sound. I'm gonna go put this on his Bronco. Turn his lights off. He's looking at me. Sorry, not sorry, David. David, I just want you to know, I this was not my idea. I'm just the cameraman. You can't blame me for that. Along with the two knuckleheads who so rudely interrupted my intro, we also had Nate Mueller from Outdoor Auto with us in his very nice Toyota Tundra. Oh God, it's beautiful. Growing up here, sometimes I take it for granted a little bit, but then I come up on times like this when there's no one else out here, it just hits me all over again how, how pretty this place is. I gotta tell you guys, these 37 inch Ditto Recon Grapplers are just eating this road for lunch right now. We could use an extra two inches back here. And we're just coming into Twin Springs. Okay, so we just pulled over this place called Twin Springs. I am from this area of Idaho. I've driven past this place countless times and I've never stopped in. But Nathan over at Outdoor Auto said we gotta stop here and we gotta see what's inside, so let's go check it out. There's a rattlesnake tank in the corner right here, and you'd pull over and you'd put money in a jar, and you stick your head to the glass, and when it struck at you, if you didn't flinch, then you'd get all the money in the jar. But the guy that died, so now there's just a, now there's just like a rattlesnake skin in there, I think, or a stuffed one. That's the old rattlesnake oh, bubble right there. The name Twin Springs comes from a very hot spring that fuels the town in more ways than one. This bar still has the feel of a 19th century pioneer saloon and is filled with tidbits of history at every turn, some of which is almost hard to believe. The rumor on this place, there is some ounce of truth in this. I, in honest to God, if somebody knows the full history, they should comment, right? But the rumor is, sometime in the 70s or late 60s, this place exchanged hands because it was a it was drug deal and gambling debt. So somebody got in mega trouble and ended up having to essentially give it to somebody else to get out of trouble. So it's got a really super varied and fascinating history. Twin Springs has more chickens than people living in it, but everyone seems to be quite friendly. <laughs> what do you want? He wants you. What do you want? Taking my foot? That's Johnny Walker. That's great, man. Hey, Johnny Walker. <laughs> They've also built tilapia fish ponds as a sustainable source of food for both the residents and guests and the local river otters. Bizarre, right? Yeah. And just randomly, you know where we are. We just did all that <laughs> driving, and then we're going to go right past this and be back to nothing for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> the resort has cabins for rent, and one in particular has a very interesting garage carved right into the side of the mountain. Well, he had dynamite, and he liked to use it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. We also got a chance to look inside one of the cabins. So we're in this cabin here at Twin Springs and it's super cozy, like rocks on the walls, and it's got uh, like 
the, they just run the water basically radiant heat through the floor. It's so warm in here. It just has me thinking like tonight it's supposed to get down to like six degrees. If we have a bug out spot, it might be this one. We might just come back here. Such a cool spot. I'm so glad we stopped. You guys see the cave up on the left, like 30 feet above the road? That's where they drilled. They were going to do a dam here. Oh, wow. Look at that. There's one on the right that's straight into that cliff face coming up over there. wonder what wildlife calls that home now. There's another hot springs to your right. You've got to cross the river to get in that one, though. There was one more hot springs Nathan and I wanted to show off on our way up to Atlanta. Hot springs is right on your left as you pass the bridge. So we stopped here at this hot springs called Loftus Hot Springs. Now, I am totally okay with mentioning this hot springs because it's a known place. It's not like a secret hot springs. But it is a beautiful hot springs. It has a waterfall cascading down into this pool. It cascades down into another pool. And, you know, when it's freezing outside, you got these hot springs you can stop and take a dip in. It's pretty nice. So, anyway, Loftus Hot Springs. It was now getting late in the afternoon. And the gloom of the incoming storm, mixed with a low sun in the sky, made for a perfectly moody drive on what seemed to be an abandoned river road. The quiet of the Idaho winter lulled us into a rhythm of bends and curves as we traced the river. Setting up camp right next to the river like this is something I've done often, but never with an incoming snowstorm. just kind of finishing setting up camp and it's supposed to be cold tonight although it's hard to imagine because it's like 34 degrees right now and the forecast that it's going to be down to like in the single digits and it's really hard to think it's going to drop that much so I'm hopeful that it won't be that cold tonight uh, but just in case I've been trying to get this uh, Weber heater here to work this diesel heater and I've been experimenting with it and the problem is it draws too many watts, like it draws or amps, it draws um, a certain amount of amps that my little external battery doesn't have enough juice to power it. And so what I've been doing is plugging it into the truck, running the truck, letting it get really, really hot so the glow plug in it isn't pulling so many watts. Once it gets warmed up, turning it off, plugging it in right away to my own battery. And then when it starts up, it doesn't take so much juice and it runs fine. And once it gets running, it's like, I don't know, like 17 watts or something like that. Like it could run for two days and it would be fine. But it's just getting it going and keeping it going. And so I'm hopeful that I will have some heat tonight. It's a new experience. I've never tried to use one of these on the trail, um, but I have backup. So Rob's got power in his Jeep that we've tested and that would work. I think Nate brought a huge external battery that would probably work. And so I, I think I'm gonna be warm, but I wanna do it on my own, you know? So let's see if this thing works. I can't believe there's three guys who have as much gear as Rob, David, and I, and no one brought an awning. So, so we're like a bunch of noobs out on the river right now trying to like stay dry and it's just not happening. So uh, note to self, bring awning next time. I forgot I volunteered to make dinner tonight, so I'm gonna make a taco soup or taco chili soupy chili taco thing uh, and um, I think it's gonna be delicious
took me for all these guys? Yeah, you too. Oh. So this has, this mixture has pinto beans, refried beans, corn, um, it has diced tomatoes, and basically like a packet of taco seasoning. And it's like a taco in a bowl. It's so good. Just a little spicy. I've never made this much of it though. <laughs> so I'm not really sure how this is gonna turn out. This whole bowl is full. Good? That's so good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, no? Did Rob likes it. This is Kentucky Ale, but it's bourbon barrel Kentucky Ale. I usually like Kentucky Ale, but the bourbon barrel stuff is, I think it's disgusting. <laughs> So I brought it for them to try. It's really good. That's how can you think this is gross? This is delicious. Oh, dude, that's really good, actually. You like that? Yeah. Surprise! It's good. <laughs> okay, update on the heater situation. So my tent smells like diesel exhaust. We tried it a couple different ways. We tried to move the exhaust pipe and it still is just pumping in this terrible diesel exhaust smell. Also, like I'd like to like maybe not die in my sleep tonight. So I'm just going to not use a diesel heater. I'm going to air out my tent for the next however long it takes. It doesn't smell like exhaust fumes in there. And, uh, and just bundle up. I brought enough stuff on this trip that I should be able to be warm even without that diesel heater because I wasn't sure if it was going to work because I've never really got it to work yet. Um, so we're just gonna punt for tonight, try again tomorrow, and uh, try to go up there and get a good night's sleep. As night settled in, we huddled around what cover we could find and watched the snow start to fall in earnest. finally started coming down like in force big snowflakes falling and they're really piling up and it's awesome also maybe I'm a little it's a little scary to be out here on the side of the river in this big old snowstorm but um, it's really pretty to watch so for the time being I'm gonna enjoy the uh, the show that nature's putting on right now try to get some sleep and have a good day tomorrow There's something about fresh snowfall that makes everything feel new, even if just for a few hours in the morning. As a kid growing up in Idaho, every time I'd see snow in the morning, I'd want to go play in it and hope school might be canceled. But waking up this morning on the river, I realized we'd inadvertently camped over an underground hot springs. So the snow was melted all around us. A new experience even for someone who'd been born and raised here. But I still had that familiar feeling of wanting to go out and play with my friends in the snow. but it's not actually too cold. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm a little disappointed about the snowfall. I really thought we'd have more than this. This is like kind of a pathetic amount of snow. But I am, I'm curious as to, as we go farther north towards Atlanta this morning, if there's more snow, like more accumulation along the way. Atlanta is a weird place. It'll get dumped on while places around it won't. So I'm hopeful that we'll still get into some snow today. It's just cold enough though that coffee sounds really good. and. David from Off the Grind is super into coffee as well, so we made a compromise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna boil the water in my Jetboil Flash, and he's gonna brew the coffee in his French press. And look, it's not that I don't like French presses, but I'm so spoiled with my AeroPress. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a shot and see how his coffee comes out. This French press. Yeah, 
David's made his French press coffee. Ooh, and it smells good. It does smell good, I'll give him that. That that'll do that'll do, David. That'll do, sir. Good, that's good. Glad Ch you approve. Cheers, man. Cheers. <laughs> I still think the arrow press is better. The branches that we came through yesterday are so weighed down right now. It's scraping the sides of the Jeeps, but it's so pretty to drive through this right now. Yeah, absolutely. I'm loving watching all the snow fall off the branches. Another aspect of waking up the fresh snow is the ability to see what animals have been lurking nearby. And Rob and David found fresh tracks that were worth stopping to look at. So here's the thing about camping out in like the wilderness areas is like during summer camping, you go to sleep at night, you hear things, maybe you don't, I don't know, you sleep, you wake up, you kind of move on. Um, in winter, there's like evidence of what's actually happening when you're camping. That's happening all year long. In winter, you can actually see that, yes, there was a large predatory cat or wolf that walked through your camp last night. Just goes to show, you're never really alone out here. Hey, shady baby, come on, light the parochial sun. We're coming up here to Barber Flats, and there's that spot up there. We could try to get up there if we wanted to. Bigger battle, mini, 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 more in flower. You're the chosen one. Yeah, I think we should. All right, let's see how these Nitto Recon Grapplers are going to do in the snow. This is where it gets a little shelfy. There's a sketchy looking spot here. So we started climbing this road that I know well in the summer, but I've never driven in the winter. And it's a little slippery. It's, you know, it's a little off camber. It's a pretty steep climb. We've come up to a pretty massive washout. And we've decided that since we're, none of us are like professional snow drivers and we're not really confident enough maybe to like try to handle this level of a washout, we're going to try to turn these rigs around or back them back down, which is equally dangerous. I think we're all feeling good. We're all feeling confident, but we're going to try to get these rigs back down the mountain and then keep on to Atlanta. Bit off more than we could chew a little bit. Maybe, well, we're not biting this off. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. All right, so I'm using my rear camera here to just try to make sure I'm centered in the road because I'm about to come up to this first kind of little whoop or washout off camber, and there's something about going through an obstacle backwards that feels way worse than going through it forwards. Let's put, hey, come forward. Let's put traction bolts right there. You have some? Yeah, good idea, I'll pull them out, good idea. All right, we're gonna use traction boards. Sliding into this washout. Just yeah, straight, straight back. I don't think you need to back up. Okay. This should hold. Okay. Yeah, I have no idea what it looks like. So. <laughs> you got three uh, traction boards uh -huh. banking you in. Okay. And one right in front of your tire. Okay. So you should get grip on that one. Just crawl. And it should keep. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah, I've got more traction boards on the back. Should we put them down? Yeah, can we put traction up here? Maybe more flat. Okay. Slipping so much. Straight out. There you go. It only took eight traction boards. <laughs> well, four and a half. Yeah, four. He does have a little cute. I uh, yeah. Baby, baby boards. So traction boards, worth having. All right, I think this is the last huff obstacle. Obstacle is the wrong word. It's just 
a little washout, but it's harder in the snow going backwards. Yeah, this doesn't look as, like there's not as much of a drop off here, but it's still not gonna be fun. It's slanted towards- There's the yeah. zero traction. Yeah. So. Should we put the baby boo-boos down here too? Yeah, I think so. So that we can use the baby ones to get up higher. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's just like that, yeah. Okay, now it's my turn to go on that backwards. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna wait right here for David to come spot me, just in case. I wonder if we can turn around here. You know, let's just let's just see if I can do it backwards. Okay, this just seems super sketchy. I know, turning around seems sketchy to me too. Almost like, I know, yeah, let's just try it. Yeah, you good. Your back's about to straighten out a little. Are I swear he went through that more easily than we than you did. I think there's something to be said for a longer wheelbase when it comes to these things. Like you got more weight kind of spread out over a dip, and so you don't fall into it quite as much in a truck. It's still. I bet you that wasn't fun. You oh, didn't no. enjoy that. I would no. I'd rather go down forward, even if it's more difficult. Yeah, 100%. Now, this has been kind of a little bit of a quagmire, but I gotta tell you, I wouldn't trade it. It's so, so beautiful, like looking out and seeing the mountains and the river. Man, I just, I love this road, and I am not sorry we did this. This is how much I hate when it goes. Not even phased. Shots fired. It can take everything. You prepped another one? You just. Oh, you always have You're one ready. You're gonna keep going. Idaho, you always have one ready. <laughs> always, you never know. This is winter. This is honestly super freaking cool. Snow is so pretty right now. This last section of road into Atlanta is my favorite stretch of the Boise Middle Fork. During the summer, the farther you go, the less people you see. And in the winter, as we got closer to Atlanta, we became totally immersed in the winter wonderland surrounding us. The road slowly inches its way towards the south side of the Sawtooths, and the river reminds you that this mountain snow is a vital part of the watershed and ecosystem we can sometimes take for granted. As we got deeper into the Idaho winter, things started to change, but we had no idea how much change we were in for in the next 24 hours. Hey, is it snowing? Oh yeah, man, we're driving towards snow. But two elk running along the river ahead of us. Get out, it's a whole herd. Awesome. With the snow falling, it's just beautiful. So when Kate was a kid and they had their cabin up here, there was no driving and you would snowmobile in like 30 or 35 miles. I have never used a snowmobile, but I would like to add that to the list of things to do. Well, we're just a few miles outside of Atlanta and uh, we're gonna connect with Nate again. He said there's a couple things in Atlanta that are worth seeing. I think he said like a jail and maybe a graveyard. I don't know that we'll be able to see them because it's so snowy, but hope that we do. And then tonight, Lance and Chris are gonna join us and we're gonna all camp together in a, in a campground there that's uh, close to town. And I don't know, there's hot springs and stuff close by too, so there's like a lot to see in Atlanta and I'm looking forward to getting there. There's definitely more snow up here. Atlanta sits on the edge of the Sawtooth Wilderness and is home to a handful of residents who still keep the roots of this pioneer mining town very much alive. I think up here is where Nathan's house is. And the town's newest resident is our very own Nathan Mueller. Oh, here he is. We're about to send out the search party. Hey guys, did you get my texts? Huh. Oh, I text your, I was texting you on Garmin. I was letting you know like, hey, we're just messing around on the snow. We, we, tr we drove up the road at Barber Flats that goes from middle to north and we got like a third of the way up and so you probably had some fun on that we had some fun we just drove to the top of the mine hill way up there oh you did but in the in the can am with tracks guess what else uh we got the bar opened up but it's a speakeasy style so we have to leave our cars up here and sneak in the back door awesome oh that sounds let's so fun let's go do it <laughs> 
What you have to know about a town like Atlanta is that the community relies on each other for everything, which means it's very tightly knit. And even if you're from Idaho, you're not a local until you've lived here for a winter. So we were grateful to be allowed in for a drink. If you ever visit the Beaver Lodge, be respectful and leave a big tip. It takes a lot of work to keep this place open, and I, for one, am grateful for it. Cheers. Did you just down that whole thing? You're gonna burn so good, but it's last call. They're closing down. What an idiot. You can't let it go to waste. <laughs> After the Beaver Lodge, we met up with Chris and his JKU 137s with the Metal Coke suspension, and Lance and his Bronco 137s. Our campsite was tucked away in a forest near a hot springs that Nathan really wanted to show us. I think this is a very snowy camp, it as good right. as as good as any very snowy camp, and we should uh, set up our tents and call it a night. Yeah, set up your tents as fast as you can. Let's go jump in some warm water. And, uh, and be secure in our manhood. Warm, <laughs> warm, urine-free water. Yeah, yeah. I mean, until I get in. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Anybody's what about what Chris did in it? Does it have to be free of that stuff? <laughs> <You're not laughs> so we went to see the hot springs, even though the temperature was in the single digits. And it was actually they, quite nice. The townies scrub the whole thing out, wow. drain it, put the plug back in, refill it. Yeah. So it's a very clean hot springs. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. yeah. However, if you want to see a bunch of dad bods soaking in a hot springs together, you have to find an OnlyFans page for that because I have zero desire to show that here. Oh, we got found the snow. Back at camp, the cold temperatures were making everything just a little bit harder. Something that became a theme later on for some of us. What's the problem? It's just frozen. Like, so these, I love this smart cap. And I don't think this is a knock on the smart cap at all, but these latches, which I love, get frozen. And so they don't actually open when it's, I don't think they were like tested in the Idaho winter. And so they get real frozen. They don't want to open again, which stinks when you just want to get your ladder out and like get into your tent. So uh, lucky enough, Rob has a knife let me borrow. This Gerber knife, which I can get in there Try him open. Now we have a ladder. Thanks, Rob. Hey, Will. Yeah. Come here. Hold on. My ladder is frozen. Your ladder's not set up right. Hey, I'm gonna come get it before you kill yourself. Is it like not locking in? No, it's uh, the step not locked in. It's not locked. It's just that one. <laughs> I just have to not step on that one. That sucks. How's your ladder, Rob? I don't have one. Oh, really? oh you just climb up. Yeah. I wish I had a ladder. Well, you don't wish you had this ladder because you might just like break your neck on accident. Yeah. All right. All right, All right that's camp. We've got camp set up. got our Idaho winter. It's definitely here. I think it was down to in the single digits last night. Mm, five, six degrees, something like that. So very frigidly cold, but it does something to the snow that's really nice. It makes the snow dry and crisp and not wet and soggy like it's been. And so it definitely, this feels like an Idaho winter to me. This morning it's like, yeah, this is what I'm used to. So Lance, uh, how does the, uh, how's the winter feel to you? Does this feel like an Idaho winter to you now? Yeah, it's nice and dry. Cold. Very cold though. Yeah, yeah it was uh, about zero. It was nine when the sun came up. Pretty awesome. Chris, how Hello. are you doing this morning, man? I am so cold. <laughs> are you sitting in the car to warm up? Yeah, uh, it's mainly my feet. My feet are like just frozen. Yeah, we so. have 
A few people with cold feet. David has real cold feet too. Yeah. <laughs> my my toes feel like they're being stabbed right yeah, now. Yeah, you can't get away from that. You do fresh socks and then time. I'm about to just jump in the fire. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. This is my drink this morning. This was, I kept this in the tent with me, so it was not frozen about 20 minutes ago when I got it out. And it's, uh, there's a big block of ice in there now. Everything's starting to freeze up. We are right at the foot of the Sawtooth Mountains. We're on the, I would call it like the backside of the Sawtooth Mountains. And they are just so beautiful. We can just, we can just see the outline of, of uh, I think it's called Greylock Mountain that's behind us. And it's just phenomenally beautiful this morning because the skies are really blue. It's really crispy out there. So I'm not exactly sure where we're going to go, but I know we got some plans to go mess around in the snow. So it should be fun. Let's go. We were all glad to turn our engines on and let our rigs heat up, which reminded us that we needed to use our auxiliary fuel since there's no real gas station in Atlanta, and we had to make sure that we could eventually get home without issues. But some of us had other problems. Chris was feeling ill and decided to head back to Boise. And David, well, David had another problem. David couldn't move his steering wheel at all, and our best guess was that his Bronco was somehow frozen solid underneath. So he went to work trying to thaw it out, which is almost an impossible task when it's this cold outside. So our situation with uh, David's Bronco has gone from bad to worse. Um, the steering box is locked, and something to do with like maybe frozen water in the, in the steering box. So it's not good. He can't turn his front tires and so we're trying to figure out how to at least get him out of here which might involve just towing so i think the decision is to tow it's going to be a real sketchy dicey tow because he can't he can't move his his front tire so we're just going to try to hopefully like slide him around the corners but the good news is i packed my trusty factor 55 recovery bag this is a sawtooth bag and it literally has everything we need in here We've got soft shackles, we've got a tow strap, we've got a tree saver, we've got a little harness. So I think we can put this together in a way that works. And then the towing, we'll see how that goes, but at least we've got the stuff to do it. Do you, have, you don't have any recovery points on the back. Yeah, but I have in this kit oh. a oh, center perfect. pulling point, so we're yeah. good. I can't stress enough how important it is to have high quality recovery gear and to understand the basics of how to use it. We took a 30 foot tow strap and ran it through the tow hitch receiver, then connected each of the ends to the front hooks on David's Bronco, which worked, except for the fact that he couldn't steer, which is a very bad towing situation. That's not working. Um, not enough traction really to pull and, and yank that 5,000 pound thing sideways currently. So uh, Nate just radioed in and he's got like a, a very, very powerful propane heater. And we're gonna see if we can just really heat up that steering box and get it unstuck. This is what I meant earlier when I said the community depends on each other. The owner of the Greylock Lodge showed up with this 150,000 BTU heater, which put out enough heat to thaw David's steering rack and make it possible for him to turn his front wheels again. So we were able to drive out of the woods and get him back to Nathan's garage. But David still needed to figure out what to do next. Okay, so we got the Bronco back to Nate's place. I really didn't want to end the trip this way. This is, I mean, no one wants to end a trip this way, right? But like. It just sucks so bad, we've had such a good time. So while David was diagnosing his Bronco problems, Rob and I went with the owner of the Greylock Lodge to see it up close. So we met up with the owner of the Greylock Lodge, which is this uh, really cool house in Atlanta that's available for rent for people. It has room for 12, and it has two balconies that look over Greylock Mountain, hence the name Greylock Lodge. And it's like the best view of Greylock Mountain in town. It's incredible. Plus, just so turns out, he has a Can-Am with tracks on it, and so, uh, we're thinking we might just get in this thing and take it up the mountain and see what it does. So while David was climbing his figurative mountain with the Bronco, we were climbing a literal mountain with the ATV. He's got a brand new car. Looks like a Jaguar. It's got leather seats. It's got a seat.
After fixing the Bronco, David started making his world-famous old fashions, and we showed up just in time for a white elephant gift exchange with everyone. Cheers. 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 Merry Christmas. Okay, so Rob hit 100,000 subscribers, which we've kind of made light of, but it's a big deal. Big dang deal. Big deal. So we want to do something. So we just did this gift exchange. It was kind of fun and silly, but we have this. We know this is his favorite bottle of bourbon, Eagle Rare. We're going to give it to him because it's a pretty awesome milestone. Yeah, it's amazing. So we wanted to say congratulations. Oh, snap. Oh. <laughs> we got you. All the way from Kentucky. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> smuggled it here. A bottle of Eagle Rare, which we know is your favorite bourbon. I asked Elizabeth oh, thank you. at Overland Expo East. Yeah. I was like, what should I get him when he hits 100K? And she goes, get him a bottle of Eagle Rare. Oh, so. it's my favorite. Yeah. Whoever sourced this for you must be a really, really, really <laughs> great guy. Honestly, congratulations, dude. Like, we're super you. proud of you, man. That's really awesome. After the festivities, Lance and I decided we wanted one more night in the snow. So we headed out to find a place to camp for the night. Uh, Lance and I decided to camp tonight and we're just having a great time sitting by the fire roasting some Cornish game hens from Chris Thank you, Chris and along pulls up this green Jeep to these two yahoos jump out and uh, It's Rob and David and they brought me the Propex because they were worried about me getting cold tonight Which is so nice. So Rob's about to help me set up the Propex so I can have some propane heat tonight Which would be which will be Probably my most comfortable night on the trip so far. This is the best thing about these draw systems the oh. SHW ones like it's like a tote. Oh yeah, look at that. Just take the whole thing out. And it happens to be the perfect size for a Propex heat assist. Yeah. Everything you need. Is Beautiful. Right You're gonna have to buy one of these, aren't you? I might. <laughs> I'm not doing diesel anymore. I'm done. I didn't, never even started and I'm done. Atlanta was rubbing off on us. Here we were taking care of each other and I was thrilled to try out this Propex heater. At the very least it didn't smell like car exhaust in my tent, so I was pretty happy. Rob and David stayed for a Blanton's by the fire before heading back to Nathan's warm cabin. But I'm a winter baby and Lance is a true mountain man, so we enjoyed the quiet solitude of a cold winter night. The next morning, the Propex turned my tent into a sauna, and the intrepid tent's massive front window gave me a view of an even snowier landscape than the day before. Lance and I are both early risers, and we weren't sure what was happening with David's Bronco, so we packed up camp in the snow and decided to head back over to Nathan's to check in. What we found out is that David's Bronco had frozen once again, and he needed it to thaw out before driving anywhere. So we took advantage of the extra time to set off with Nathan to see a couple historic highlights of Atlanta. So we're outside of this cabin here and it's just a preserved 1800s cabin. So it's really cool to see on the inside just, you know, what sparse small space these people had, but they had everything they needed. They had a place to cook and a place to heat, a place to sleep, uh, books, a place to, you know, a desk to do any kind of desk work. It's like a little mini studio apartment that would go for a lot of money in New York, but here it's, it's an old miner's cabin. And it's really, really cool to see. We'll have to see if we can get into the jail though. I think we can get into the jail. We're breaking, got, we're breaking into the jail? Yeah, we're breaking into the jail. And the jail has very interesting toilets. You'll have to check this out. The jail is basic, rustic, cold, and has toilets made of barrels with a hole emptying directly into the creek below. Old school plumbing. There was also some additional information on how Atlanta got its name. Spoiler alert, they weren't thrilled with the outcome of the Civil War. I can only walk about 100 feet like this and then my legs are tired. We now had to get David downriver, so we set out to see some sights that we had skipped on the way up. This is so beautiful, it almost feels fake. This is the first time I really had a chance to test these Nitto Recon Grapplers in the snow. I was interested to kind of just feel this tire out in the snow, and so far it's been, I would say, good. I wouldn't say it's great, it's not phenomenal, but it's good. I haven't really been wanting for more traction, or it hasn't, I guess it hasn't really failed me in terms of traction. I think it's holding true to its workforce kind of label. It's a tire that so far, you know, can do off-road dry stuff just fine, but it's been, it's been pretty good in the snow. 
One of the things I love about driving on a snowy road like this is just how quiet it is. I have my window down, and there's almost zero road noise. The spring's on the other side of the road. So we walked across this icy bridge to get a closer look at this geothermal hotspot along the river. The snow falling all around us made for a strong juxtaposition between the green grass and our frozen white surroundings. Oh, moving my feet up nicely. Yeah, dude, it's hot. Like, I don't think I could put my full body in there. So we're down here at one of many hot springs along the Boise River, and what some people don't know is that Idaho, particularly this stretch of the Boise River system, has more hot springs per linear mile of river than any place else in the country. So for us that are from here, it's kind of like, oh yeah, there's steam coming off. But for other people who aren't used to seeing hot springs, it's really, really cool. So coming down here with Rob and David, I got to kind of experience it again because it's just neat to see like lava heated water coming out and forming these pools. We should cherish these moments with Rob because as soon as we hit pavement again, he's too good for us. I'm already too good for you, I just, I don't want to be left by myself. This drive for me, anything that happened before this was worth it for this drive right now. This drive has genuinely been my favorite part of this entire thing. This trip reminded me that everything changes, and sometimes all at the same time. But when you get the chance to see something you've loved forever through a fresh lens, take it. Because something new might pop into focus along that road you've driven a hundred times. Sometimes all it takes is friends to join you, to make you stop and appreciate what you have right in front of you. This is my backyard, but I bet if you look again at yours, you'll find something new, something you didn't know was there, that maybe was zip tied to the top of your rig. So, so I'm slowly making my way back home. I stopped at this rest stop and I noticed something as I was walking back to my truck. I don't know who did this. Pretty good one though. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the dripping. I don't know what to do around you now because you're so famous. Here. So <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go uh, find something you can autograph. You've you've ruined my intro. <laughs> yeah. Cut all of that. <laughs> it's not right on the water. I believe you want to be right on the I water. I believe Rob said right on the water. <laughs> I did. <laughs> it's hard to do a good job winding him back up, to be honest.